It was so amazing to see the purgle in live action, and even though we knew this moment was coming from, well, the trailers because we saw this scene there, the transition from animation to live action was nothing like I expected. These things are menacingly huge, and they bring a fantasy element from Star Wars Rebels that I never anticipated we'd see again after 2018. It was such a Dave Filoni moment. What do I mean by this? Well, for one thing, I don't mean it with any negative connotation, it's a positive. I came across a hilarious meme of Filoni laughing, and someone added the text, so you thought the Space Wells episode was just filler. And while this is all said in jest, just a joke, there is some excellent truth to this. Dave is amazing at paying off story tropes that seem meaningless in the context of their first appearance, usually in animation, and making them an enormous part of the narrative of said story further down the line. You see, prior to Ahsoka, we had assumed the Purgle stuff was already paid off with the Rebel Season 4 finale because they did appear earlier in the show. They first appeared in the episode titled The Call, which was season two, episode 15, all the way back in February of 2016. The ghost was in desperate need of fuel, and so Hiroson Jula and the rest of the crew visit a mining guild asteroid. And while there, they encounter space whales known as the Purgle. Hayang gave a great explanation of their importance in Ahsoka and recounted the hyperspace lane migration patterns that the villains of the show will follow using the Eye of Scion to get to Thrawn in the second galaxy. These majestic creatures were a semi-sentient species of massive whales that lived in deep space. They could travel from star system to star system, and as we now know, they can traverse galaxies. They're extremely important to both this series but the Mandoverse more broadly. When they first appeared in Star Wars Rebel Season 2, they were considered by the Ghost Crew to be burdensome due to their habit of approaching and flying into starships near their flight's paths, and for ships crashing into their swarms during hyperspace travel. But Ezra, against all of the odds, established a false connection to them. They would eventually be the ones who carried Ezra and Thrawn into the unknown at the end of Star Wars Rebels, two seasons later, which of course gave Sabine a moment of reflection. It was weird for her seeing them again. It reminds her of Ezra. During the liberation of Lothal, rebel pilots Mart Matin, Commander Wolf, and Visago sent a signal on frequency zero from the Ghost to call upon a group of Purgle. We had no idea just how much Dave Filoni had planned for these amazing creatures. I never would have expected them in live action, but the same can be said for most of Star Wars Rebels. For so many until relatively recently, it was an obscure animated show. And so when fans found out the Mandalorian was tying into it, and then of course Ahsoka, it set a precedent for the future of Star Wars, that animation and live action could have a huge overlap in a way we've never seen before. You could say the Clone Wars series did something similar, but that was bridging the gap between episodes two and three, leading up to Revenge of the Sith, with the Mandalorian and its spin-offs, what we like to call the Mandoverse, Star Wars Rebels informed a great deal of its future. But something very few fans remember is that they were controversial, there were online discussions about how strange it was that there were whales in space that were not in water, and I remember social media complaints very well. Some said it took them out the story. But now that the significance to finding Ezra has been established, it's great to see so many fans on board. I for one thought the live action translation was some of the best use of CG in recent Disney Star Wars history, and I adore the scale they went for. Huge, fantastical. Ahsoka and Sabine in the chase sequence navigating through them is already a fan favorite moment. It's a Dave Filoni moment. I like a lot of the episodes. I think they all have unique stories, even episodes that I know people on Team Tell Me fans call filler episodes. They'll be surprised how important those episodes are later, I'll say that. Everything's included for a reason, even if we can't see it yet. And so when we look at other properties that Dave's been involved with, especially more recently with The Bad Batch, we've got to wonder what else has been set up that's gonna pay off later on, maybe even in live action. I know Dave is less involved these days with that specific show, and it's mostly Brad Rao and Jennifer Corbett, but the characters are largely his own creation, and so much of their stories originated with him. One specific thing I have in mind, and I've said this before, is Hera and Omega meeting and interacting in the Bad Batch season one. While I doubt Omega will feature in the Ahsoka series, I do believe a reunion in live action is coming in the future, in the same format, maybe in Dave Filoni's film. I think we need to have the third and final season of the Bad Batch first, before we can start talking about that. But you never know, that's a surprise a lot of Bad Batch fans wanna see. Recently, Mary Elizabeth Winstead revealed the one instruction Dave Filoni had for her in preparation for depicting Hiroshin Jula in this live-action series. 
In an interview with Empire Magazine, which was conducted prior to the ongoing sag after strike, Mary Elizabeth Winstead revealed that Dave Filoni gave her a watch list, and it did include The Bad Batch. He wanted her to focus on those scenes where Hera is a leader, and also those where she's flying, talking about her love of flying. And speaking of Dave Filoni translations from animation to live action, and big payoffs, we had an enormous one in this episode, Jason Sinjula, the son of Hera and Kanan, and fans have noticed on his shoulder, a pauldron very similar to that of his dad. There is a future for Jason that I think is going to be force sensitive. I don't know if they're going to explore that in this series, it could be another one of Filoni's setups. But one thing is for sure, they do use the phrase, a new Jedi will rise in some of the teasers. And fans are adamant it may not be Sabine, but rather Jason, or both. Some have criticised his live action appearance, and there is a lot of questions surrounding how does a Twi'lek human develop these specific features? He does not resemble any other hybrids we've seen before. He's mostly human, and this could be explained by Kanan having more dominant genes, maybe Hera's green skin is recessive, and maybe Sabine dyed it for him, out of respect for his mother. They've never given us a canon explanation, and recently we got a fantastic character poster for both him and Mon Mothma, Chancellor of the New Republic. I hope we get some more scenes with her, preferably near the end of the series when she realises that Hero was right, the threat of Thrawn is incoming. And what I love about this poster, because I'm a huge Mon Mothma stan, is the fact she's not a hologram. So if I were to guess, I would suspect we are going to see more of her. And I do keep my fingers crossed they're going to use some aspects of Heir to the Empire, especially regarding her interactions with Admiral Akbar, General Leia, and Han Solo. But that is a lot to ask. Again, that could be in Dave's film. But I think the New Republic's been portrayed perfectly, incompetent, and heading downhill. And having a character like Hamato Giono, who I draw a comparison to the Legends character Failure, is perfect to enable this. Someone who's hard-headed, someone who didn't support the Rebel Alliance, and doesn't really have a stake in the New Republic succeeding, but rather selfish reasons. As frustrating as this is, it's necessary at this time. I can't wait for episode 4, and tomorrow my dear friends, look out for my preview, we have a lot of things to break down, some news, some rumours, it's going to be a lot of fun, and then, on Tuesday, the episode drops, and you can expect my full breakdown and review. That episode is by Peter Ramsey, I'm sure it's going to be awesome. If you enjoyed this video my dear friends, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, share your thoughts down below, and as always, if you want more videos that you can't find here on YouTube while also getting access to our Discord server, then click the link down below. That will take you over to my Patreon page. But until the next one my dear Maglorians, may the Force be with you, always.